YouTube. I just wanted to give everybody a quick update. Um, potatoes are looking really good. I had to move them away from the house so they get more sun. <clears throat> it looked like they were growing a lot of tops, but and I do have two potato bags here that you can open at the bottom. And I opened one and checked it, and there is potatoes. So, uh, the Red Norlands and the Yukon Golds, we can harvest in May. And the uh, German Butterball takes a little longer. So it'll be early June before we can harvest it. It's the slowest growing potato, of, and it's an indeterminate. So I actually have one of them planted in the wrong bag because <laughs> you can keep adding dirt, adding dirt, and adding dirt or soil, compost, whatever you're using um, to them until, you know, they're, just the tops are showing. And they will make potatoes on the vine, all the way up the vine that's covered. But the uh, Red New Orleans and New Congos are determinate. They are only make... You didn't need to, I didn't need to have added so much soil to them. But I did because I didn't want any green potatoes. And now they're, they're covered really nice, so I shouldn't have to worry about that. I put in some marigolds and, and I got my tomatoes in. Probably put the marigolds a little bit close, too close to the tomatoes. But while I was out here doing this, my son was mowing the grass. And uh, he is just absolutely a renegade with a lawnmower. I had to just quit and go inside because the trash was hitting me in the face. He apologized later, said he knew he shouldn't have been mowing when I was out there. But at the time, he was it was getting close to dark and he wanted to finish. I wanted to show you something about my Satsuma Mandarin. It's normal for them to put on a lot of fruit. And this tree is only a, like five years old, six years old, maybe. If that, I think we put it in about the third year we were here. And this year we were here, I believe eight years. I could be off one year on that. When you're retired and uh, not going to a job, one week runs into another, and one month runs into another. And you only notice really the seasons. Uh, it had a very heavy crop after it bloomed, and it's thrown off two thirds of it. As you can see right there, there's quite a few that will stay. I can look at the ones that will stay, and the ones that won't, the ones that won't will have a yellow cap on their uh, stamen. I mean, the, it'll just turn yellow and it'll make a little fruit, but the fruit will turn a light color, and then the next thing you know, it's on the ground. And here's an example of that. See that one here? See how yellow that stamen is? The little fruit underneath it is not real green. It will probably fall off. And on the other hand, there's one right there that won't. And there's another one right there that will probably stay. There's still quite a few on here. We'll have plenty if the ones that are, if most of the ones that are on here stay. Had a lot of new growth this year. <clears throat> and I also done a little more research on these, on the citrus. They need they need zinc, uh, much more so than, let's uh, say your plums and your peaches. They need a, a fertilizer with zinc in it. And uh, I was recommend, it was recommended to me by a pecan grower, by someone who talked to a pecan grower that also grows citrus. And uh, well, I guess most people up north and even in Georgia say pecans. Well, here in this part of the country, we will always call them pecans. <laughs> you call them whatever you will, they're a nut. <laughs> um, I found out from them that uh, they need zinc 
and the pecan fertilizer has has the zinc they need so I won't fertilize them now because it would probably cause the rest of the fruit to fall off but on out in the summer after I know the fruit has a good set and it's not going to leave the tree I will give it a little bit not a lot but a little bit of the pecan fertilizer and this winter after the fruit has all been harvested or hung on the tree till it's not fit to eat or whatever the case might be if I find any of these leaves that has been infected with that that oh, little critter that gets in there and sucks the life out of your leaf I pick them off and put them in the trash that's going away to the to wherever they take the trash here I don't know we don't have a dump site so uh, some other city is taking our our uh, waste and and putting it somewhere I, I have no idea where so this is a very small town and all your electricity your water and everything you know the sewer the whole thing is all added together in one bill which is nice you don't have to go several different places or send several different checks or however you pay your bills we usually just drop ours off because it's on the way to my son's work and my onions i um not grow onions in pots before except for maybe some spring onions but um for some reason, my onions aren't bulbing, and there's nothing below the ground but the roots. And it's the same fertilizer that I would have given them planted in the soil. Um, I have grown onions before, not had this problem, so I got no ideas. Anybody else got any ideas what I can do to call it, make them bulb? I would be happy to sit, read your comments. Because I want a bulb on that onion. I don't want to just eat green onions. I um, hope everyone's going to have a blessed week. And stay home and stay safe. That's, every, that's the advice the government's giving everybody. And I'm trying to adhere to it. Two, the Bible says obey the laws of your land. And right now the law in Alabama is... Shelter in place. The only places you're allowed to go is the grocery store and the pharmacy. I know a lot of people are not abiding by that, but I am. I'm old and uh, I have health problems that would probably do me in if I caught that virus. So I'm trying to steer clear of, of it, period, if I can. All right, everybody have a good week. I know you probably will if you're home. You're probably watching a lot of YouTube videos or Facebooking or doing something or gardening. That's what people should be. Uh, those people that don't garden should be learning how to garden. So hopefully these little videos that we gardeners are putting out will benefit these new gardeners. Uh, the blueberries are all looking good. You know, they didn't shed. Our winter was so... Uh, less winter than we needed that my blueberry bushes didn't even shed all their old leaves and my neighbor's cat has found a nice easy place to use her toilet and I'm not liking it one bit in my sweet potato bed my son helped me make this really yeah I got him out here I had the slips ready and he dug down about 12 inches forked it with a with a fork about 12 inches into the soil and loosened all that underneath soil up and then I took all my compost from that compost pile over there that I've restarted and uh, his heat it'll heat up here it's been heating up here except we had a cold snap come through and cool down and enjoyed it so much but it's warming back up today and these pumpkins that were put in there over the winter in that compost pile keep coming up. I can't tell. I bet I've pulled hundreds out. Hundreds. <laughs> they didn't decompose at all. And they sprouted and they come up in here. And I can't let them grow because I have a 
not they're not pumpkins they're winter squash but I call all winter squash pumpkins mm -hmm. but I can't let them grow in here because they would literally take over before the uh, sweet potatoes took off they're they're doing good but they like hot weather and it's not you know been consecutively hot when it's consecutively hot you'll see them crowd out this bed and I'll uh, probably go over the bricks but he done 12 inches of loose soil underneath and then we put 12 inches of composted soil on top and I'm putting my slips and watered them in real good and they're they're doing good in spite of some being smaller and some being larger and we had a light frost and some of the leaves got a little damage on them see that leaf there but it'll come back it'll come back and today I'm putting my peppers I know that you're not supposed to plant uh, those potatoes anywhere close to your tomatoes but I'm all out of options here all this back here is in the shade the majority of the day see the trees love the shade mosquitoes love it as well you get back there you get eat up so they got a distance of what 15 20 foot max I would love to have had the potatoes closer to the road but my son just <laughs> he's just not up for that <laughs> He spends quite a bit of time doing his lawn and even in spite of the fact that we might have a food shortage, he would rather have a pretty lawn than a lot of food growing. I I don't understand it. You probably won't understand it. Oh, it's just some people's mode of thinking. I don't know. I want to keep up with the Joneses or what have you. Uh, and my opinion keeping up with the joneses ain't never got anybody anything but in debt so if the joneses can live like multi-millionaires and probably be deep in debt isn't that a pretty uh echinacea and there's a double one i've never seen a double one before anyway that's that looks like a slug got it caught in the sun right there I hope he died because they eat my strawberries before I can get them see I probably have some here ready to pick I sent my son out late yesterday afternoon because I got a bum knee I, I broke it years ago and it saw I somehow twisted it yesterday morning when I was coming through the kitchen and I, well I don't think I had to twist it. It just caught and almost threw me down. And ever since then, I've been hobbling on it. It's, it's really sore and it hurts. But anyway, my uh, southern high bush, which is the big blueberry, I really, really would like these cuttings that I have in this bag here under that bag as a, it keeps the humidity in. I really, really hope they take and root. And if they do, I'll probably do away with these dwarfs over here. I mean, they make a lot of berries, the dwarfs do, and they don't get in your way. But they don't make nearly as many. See, this little guy is loaded. It won't ever get over four foot tall. This guy is loaded. It threw off half of its crop because I let it get too dry. I didn't realize it was so dry. And this little guy here, he's got berries, but not enough to want to keep this one. And he's putting out runners. And I thought, mm, maybe I'll transplant the runners. And then I thought, I'm not crazy about this berry bush. Why would I plant, transplant his runners? And this little peach that I thought was died after I moved it has come out, or is coming out rather. And I did two, uh, I did two bud grafts on it that doesn't seem to have taken. If they have, they're mighty slow. I took the buds off the uh, Florida Queen peach and put them on this contender peach. This this year this 
tree is only a couple years old, so I'm not going to give it too much uh, encouragement until I, I mean, I'm not going to say too much bad about it until I see whether or not it actually is going. I dug it up. The roots didn't seem any bigger than they were when I planted it. And it might have been because it was planted so close to the other peach tree. I don't know. But I gave it its own space, loosened up all the dirt as far away from it so the roots could come out. And I'm not going to fertilize it until I know it's got a good root foundation. And that's all for me today. I hope everybody's doing well. God bless. And a lot of people are praying now that haven't been praying. And seeking God's word that hasn't been seeking it. And I would suggest to anybody that that's where you'll find all the answer to your problems. Uh, Jesus came and died for us. The least we can do is try to find out about him. God bless. Have a great week.